What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's good to be back. I had to dust off the camera equipment on this one. It's been, uh, I guess, eight weeks, seven, eight weeks now since I uploaded a video. And I want to upload this video because it's a perfect timing for it. I had a lot of questions coming in. I had a guy, ask, a few people ask me, but Dave, why aren't you making rut reports? And during this time of year, because everybody else is doing it. Well, number, the main thing is, I don't need to make rep reports. I'm gonna go over this whole thing and hopefully it'll make sense to you. you we, I don't need to make a rut report. Nobody needs to make a rut report because the rut happens at the same time every year. What happens is you get these articles, Field and Stream, um, I, I can't think of the top ones off the top of my head, but all these articles, right? Back in the day, it used to be magazines. They used to ship out these magazines. You could be, you could have, be a subscriber to these magazines, ship them out and they make money, right? It's about business, advertisements, and money. Now it's all digital. So when you click on links, how to hunt the rut, or what's the best days of the year to hunt the rut, when you click on that, it's called advertising. They get paid for that. It's all about money, right? Well, they can come up with multiple different days to hunt, you know, November 4th, 5th, you know, October 28th. I'm seeing all these dates pop up. And you click on that, advertisements play on the page, that company gets paid, you read the article, you really don't learn much because every year they come out with the same thing and, and all that stuff. So YouTube wise, you know, people are making rut reports. There's multiple people that's doing it. It's about money. You know, you watch the rut report and then they give you a website to click on in order to join some kind of class, take a you know, hunting class or a food plot course or whatever it is, it's about money it gets you to watch the video and then sign up for some kind of class it's all when you when you do this type of stuff full-time as a business that's what it's about it's all about money it's about getting the customer to click on links and to sign up for some kind of training class here's how I'm gonna break it down the rut happens at the same time every single year within a few days same time whether it's hot cold, snowing, raining, or windy, the rut happens every single time, the same time every year. If it didn't, right, uh, does wouldn't be pregnant and have offspring at the same time every year. The does have offspring pretty much all within a few weeks of each other. Uh, in the springtime, May, mid-May, end of May, early June, whatever it is, they all pretty much bred within a couple weeks of each other in your state. You hunt your state, you live in your state, you know when the rut starts. Best time you can say is October you know, 25th, things start kind of getting heated up and it could go all the way to November 20th, right? So when, you, when do you want to be in the woods? You need to be in the woods from October 25th till about the 10th or 15th, 20th of November. Any time that you can get out, you need to be out there. All day sits, morning sits, morning action right now seems to be a little bit better than afternoons, but that's just what I'm seeing, okay? Let's take this a step further, okay? Because now we're seeing comments on social media, we see this every single year, there's no rut this year. People are making comments on, on these Facebook groups, starting all this drama, there's no rut this year, it's too hot, it's raining, it's windy, there, there's just no rut. Well, no, let's rephrase your question or your statement. There's no rut in your property. So then we have guys that are complaining that they're just not seeing rut activity and they don't understand why. And then you have guys that are making these rut reports online, giving predictions on the rut. Well, they're only giving you predictions as based on their sightings on their physical properties that they're hunting. Most of these properties are in prime states, prime areas, and they're prime locations for hunting whitetails that's only giving you a prediction on that specific property. We all know November 1st in the entire, you know, Midwest, Eastern part of the states is an awesome time to be in the woods. We all know that. We all know November 2nd is a great time to be in the woods all across the Whitetails range. November 5th, November 10th, it's all a great time to be in the woods. There's no specific day. I mean, I think there's what, uh, the most Boone and Crockett entries are like November 7th or something, well, that's the peak of the rut, you know? We all know this. We all need to be in the woods hunting the most we possibly can 
during those couple weeks of the sea, of, of the rut. Now, during the rut, you know, I think this is my 25th year of bow hunting, whitetails. During the rut, you're gonna have highs and lows. Each property is gonna be 100% different than the others. Take a road. You could have rut over here, no rut on, on this side of the road. It's very property dependent. What one person is seeing in Maryland is gonna be completely different than somebody that's in PA or Illinois or Iowa, Kentucky, whatever it is. It's very property dependent. So I broke this down in four step, uh, four, you know, statements, four different uh, scenarios. Number one, the rut. It's very property dependent. And this is in order of importance. Property dependent. What do I mean by that? There's properties where whitetails want to be. And in this case, we're going to talk about mature bucks because pretty much, you know, every, every time a bow hunter goes out there, you know, you pretty much have a chance of shooting, you know, small bucks. And if that's your choice, you know, go ahead and shoot a small buck. In my case, I've already shot small bucks. You know, when I was grown, when I grew up into bow hunting, I shot plenty of small bucks. Now I only want to shoot a buck that I, I want to mount on the wall or, a, you know, a good solid eight pointer, 10 pointer, 125, 30, 140 inches. Doesn't really matter to me. Just a solid buck that gets me excited. But those those mature bucks, they want to be on a specific property. It, it, what, for whatever reason, they want to be there. It's just property dependent. Some properties are just going to be fantastic and some properties are not. I remember years ago, we hunted Ohio and I was with an outfitter, this is probably 20 years ago. The first year we went with this outfitter, we were hunting properties that have been hunted, you know, multiple years in a row, didn't really have much success. The second year we came back and we were put on a brand new farm, brand new. It was never hunted, at least by you know the outfitter. This property was the best property for the rut that I've ever seen in my entire life. I saw rutting activity every single day of the year. For, for what's the reason? Well, number one, it's Ohio. It's a great state to hunt whitetails. Number two is the property had it was thick. It had field edges. It had a mix of pines and cedars and oaks and ridges and all it had everything that a deer would want right so they preferred that property to be on it's going to be the same for every single hunter private land you know private hunter that there is across the whitetails range this property is going to be fantastic this property is going to be crappy it's just the way that it goes there's just some properties that deer want to be and other properties they do not number two on this list is what are your neighbors doing? Because I can promise you, I can 100% promise you, what your neighbors are doing on their land is directly affecting your land and there's nothing you can do about it unless you have this long drawn out conversation with them. You start arguments and you get the entire neighborhood on the same mentality as you. It's just not gonna happen. Your neighbors riding four wheelers, riding the property lines, you know, run, letting dogs loose, running through the woods, um, them, them hunting, you know, spooking deer out of bedding area, whatever it is, that neighbor has a direct impact on your land. The larger your land is, you know, you know, connected to others, the less of an impact your your neighbors are going to have on your property. The smaller it is, the more dramatic it's going to take place on your property because when you know, say you got 40 acres, a deer runs, you know, gets spooked, it's running through your property. It's not just gonna stop, right? And does and young bucks are gonna handle this. Mature bucks are not. They do not wanna see people. They don't wanna have any human intrusion. They just don't wanna have it. They don't wanna deal with it. And during a rut, you may get lucky, right? That buck may be out of his mind on a female, chasing females, does, and he just happens to run through the woods, and past your tree stand, you get lucky. But in majority of cases, that's just not gonna happen either, right? So again, it's property dependent and what the heck are your neighbors doing? Because if they are doing dumb stuff, then it's going to have a direct impact on your land. Now all this goes into habitat management. What can we do to improve this? Well, you can put in, you can do cuttings, you can do food plots, you can try to control movement, you can have bedding areas, you can have all this different type of stuff and it's going to help, right? It's going to help 100% but it's not to cure all. Some properties, again, like I said, property dependent, some properties the deer just do not want to be there. 
it can't help it. It is what it is, nothing you can do. You're gonna have to move, find a new place, get a new piece of land, whatever, whatever you have to do, but that property just sucks and you just don't wanna, they just don't wanna be there. Number three on this list is food, right? Where is the food that the whitetails want at that time of year during the rut? Well, during the rut, bucks are eating less because they only have one thing on their mind, finding a hot doe. They're chasing, their mind is focused just on the females. Does, they want food, they're eating as normal. Um, you know, they may be hitting the food pots, but then if they're on the food pots, they get pressured by the bucks. So then, therefore, the food pots don't get a lot of activity um, during certain parts of the day or, or even at night because the bucks are in there running them around. So what do the bucks need? Well, they still have to eat because they have to maintain some energy sources. Well, again, food plots, high stem count, woody browse that time of year because most, you know, when a rut comes in, most everything is dormant like it is here in Maryland. Um, you got to have that woody browse effect. You have to have stem counts, whatever it is, um, during that time of year, November time frame, uh, where those deer need that food to be to be, even be attracted to your property is bedding. And this is a this can go I can go on for days with this because I'm sure everybody has seen this new this new study. I think it was MSU Deer Labs where you know they collared a bunch of uh, bucks according to they're trying to they were trying to find out where they're bedding at. And I can't you might have to look this up but it was over like a hundred different beds on one specific buck. And I've been saying this for years now on my videos and Chris talk we talk about this on the podcast and stuff and just because you create a bedding area on your property does not mean that buck's going to bed there. A buck, just because you lay a branch down, hinge cut a tree or something, that buck may bed there one time, two times, whatever it is. But trust me, he has other beds. And again, property dependent, bedroom dependent. Sometimes bucks, you know, they're going to they're gonna have their favorite place to bed and they're going to have multiple places to bed. If they get tired, they're going to lay down, right? If, they, if they're out running around and they find a certain area that they've never been to before, they wander into that area chasing a doe or something, they get tired, he's just going to bed down. There's multiple different beds that that buck is going to have. So we can, make the, we can try to set the property up, have the bedding area to help control the daylight deer movement of that buck, but it's just not going to happen 24-7. That deer's, trust me, it's going to leave your property. It's going to go over to your neighbor's property. It's going to go to that neighbor's property and it's going to go to that neighbor's property. The larger your property is, the more we can control this. The smaller it is, the more problems we're going to have, you know, with that buck leaving your property because their property is only so big. So property dependent, food, cover, and what are your neighbors doing? I listed those in the beginning in order of importance. So, you know, I see all these comments, on, you know, people are depressed, they're not seeing deer. Trust me, guys. It, it, it's not just you, it, it's a lot of people. And this is the thing that these guys aren't telling you. It's what they're not telling the, the average person is these rut reports and all these things is property dependent. It's only what they're seeing, right? And it's gonna vary from property to property. Take a road down the center, you're gonna have rut over here, no rut over here. Where's the hot dough at? The bucks are gonna, you know, gonna, be, gonna be on it, but there's no prediction because the, buck, the bucks are gonna be all over the place, out of their mind, running around. It's hard to define the movement for them uh, when they get on that hot doe because they're just everywhere. You know, the bucks I see on my farm, I have tons of travel corridors where they, they're using earlier in the season. And then now I've seen bucks and they're just chasing all over, all over the place. They're, they're just chasing all over the place. They're not necessarily using trails. Now, if they're in the seeking phase, they're actually looking for a hot doe you will catch them on pinch points, travel court. We all know this, right? So just be careful when you're, when you're you know, reading these rut reports because it's pr very property dependent. We all know the rut is taking place. Some properties are gonna be better than others. That's all there is to it. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you guys are new. Give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next video.